Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new tutorial series on MySQL, SQL, and Python. Now the goal of this series is to get you familiar with SQL, which is a structured query language that is used in all different kinds of databases, and then to apply that knowledge to MySQL, which is a popular database that's used by a lot of companies and a lot of web applications and things of that nature. So essentially, before I go too far, I just want to tell you why you might actually want to learn this, especially if you're just kind of clicking to see what this is. MySQL is usually actually actually required or not MySQL, but SQL is usually a required skill for most programming jobs, even entry level positions. So recently I've actually been looking at a few different um, positions for programming and almost all of them require that you know SQL or that you have some kind of experience with relational database systems like SQLite, MySQL and the other ones that exist out there. So anyways, if you're looking for a job, I'd recommend that you guys follow along with this tutorial or at least learn SQL on your own time because it is something that you may be tested on and be expected to know or be familiar with for a certain position. So anyways, with that being said, let's get started. What we're going to do in this video is be downloading the tools that we need to actually work with MySQL. Now, an important thing about MySQL is that it's different from some other database systems like SQLite, and this typically is designed to run on a server. So we're going to be doing this on our local machine for this specific video, and in later videos, we'll actually deploy this out to a server and see how to work with it there. But just so you know, this typically runs on its own computer, its own machine, typically a Linux machine. And what happens is a client can connect to that server and use the database like that. Whereas a database like SQLite just runs locally on whatever it's using. So this is typically, in my opinion, more powerful and more used in terms of like large applications. You typically have a dedicated server for your database. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get started and download the things we need to. So we're going to head over to this web link right here. This should be able to bring it, uh, bring you guys right to it. I'll leave it in the description. Now, if at any point you're asked to make an account, you don't need to do that. Um, you can go through this without making one, just so you're aware of that. So anyways, once we get to this page, the first thing we're going to download is this uh, installer right here. So there's two options. You can choose either one you want. I've downloaded the larger one because that means I don't have to wait for this web installer to install the rest of it once it's downloaded. And once we have that downloaded, we're going to run through the installer, which I'll do right now. Okay, so I've opened up the installer here for my downloads folder, and now it's bringing me to a page that looks like this. Now here you can choose which one you want from this list. Now I'm going to recommend we just go developer default. We need at least the server and we need some of the client stuff as well, because well, we're going to be connected to it from this specific machine, but developer de default is fine. So we'll click next. When we go here and it says MySQL for Excel, we don't need that unless I mean you want that. So I'm just going to click yes. Okay, that's fine. And now we have all these things that need to be installed. So let's go ahead and click execute. Now, if for some reason any of these don't work, you can always reinstall things after um, with like a previous version of MySQL, anything like that. So don't be worried if these fail. For me, the first time doing it, some of them did fail and you can go back and reinstall them and I'll show you how to do that. So once this is done, I'll be right back and we'll continue. All right, so we've gone through here and noticed that this connector for Python failed. Now we do need to install this, but I'm going to do this a different way. So don't worry about that. And let's go ahead and continue for now if this next button works. Okay, so now we're here and it says, do you want an INNO database cluster or standalone MySQL server? Um, again, this is not super important. We're just going to go standalone server as the default here. Now we're going to have this that comes up. We can just leave this alone. We don't need to touch this for now because this is just going to be on our development computer as noted here. Uh, but you could see that if you're going to run this on a server, you could choose server computer, dedicated computer, whatever it is. So anyways, let's go ahead and continue here. Now it's going to ask for all this. Let's just go the recommended use strong password encryption. We'll click next. And now it's going to ask us for a root password. Now it's important that you remember this password. So make it something you're going to remember. Uh, now, there we go. I'm going to type mine in. I've just made mine root uh, so that I remember it. You guys can make it whatever you want. And now we need to create a user account. So I'm going to start by doing this. I'm going to make the username Tim for host. We'll leave it like that. And for password, I'm going to make the password Tim as well. Uh, what is the password does not mean. Okay, so I'll make it root as the password. All right, there we go and continue on. Now we have a database user. We have our root password and we can continue. Okay, so now this is where we might want to look at some things here. So what this is saying is this is going to run this as a Windows service, which essentially means it's going to run in the background continuously. Now, I want this to happen because I'm going to be working with MySQL, but some of you may not want this. So just 
keep that in mind when it says, you know, configure MySQL as a Windows service. You don't need to do this, but it's going to be easier in the future if you just leave it running in the background. Now for the service name, you can change this if you want. I'm just going to leave this the same and move uh, next. All right. So now we have these that we need to do. So let's just click execute, wait for that to finish up and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so that's finished. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish here and then we'll go through and click next. It's going to say bootstrap MySQL router. We don't need to do that. So we'll just hit finish. Okay, now we'll go next again. And now it's going to ask us for this one more time. So the password for root is going to be root. So we'll do that. When it says show MySQL uh, server instance that may be running in read only mode, we don't need to do that. I uh, will check that that works correctly with the password for root, which my password was root. And then we'll hit next. Okay, now finally we'll click execute, we'll go through this, and the server should hopefully be installed on our machine. We have a few more steps to go through and then we'll actually be ready to start writing some code here. Okay, so next thing here, we're gonna hit next again, and it says start MySQL workbench after setup, start shell after setup. I don't actually need either of these, so I'm gonna click finish, but you can launch these if you want. Okay, so now we have successfully installed MySQL. Now, if we want to actually like kind of mess with this and see what it is, I mean, we can type MySQL. First of all, there's a MySQL uh, installer, which means we can install other things that we need to. And we have a workbench and a shell. So let's open up the workbench and just kind of explore what this is. We're not really going to use it, but I just want to show you that we do have a tool that's able to kind of navigate our um, database. So we can see we have one connection here. Um, oh, I got to type in my password. So let's type in root. And there we go. So we had one instance there. Now I'm inside of here. We, this is where we can actually type SQL queries directly. And then we can kind of mess with the database, look at it, see all this stuff that's going on in here. I'm not really going to explain this, but I mean, if you get more advanced, then you can mess with this graphical interface. We're not going to deal with that for now though. Okay. So now we need to install the connector for Python. Now what the connector allows us to do is actually make SQL queries from Python code, which is kind of the whole point of this tutorial series. All right, so some of you guys might have seen that when you installed that your Python connector failed. Now, if it worked properly, chances are that you don't need to do this next step. So I'm going to show you how to check. So what we're going to do is just run um, a Python command inside of like our command prompt. That's what I'm going to do at least. You guys can do this from like IDLE, like wherever you write your Python code is where you're going to do this. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm just activating my base directory because this is Anaconda that I'm using. It's not really relevant. I'm just going to type Python. You can see that my Python version is 3.7.2. It shows right there. That's how you can kind of check if you're in the right version. And then what I'm going to do is just try to import MySQL. Now, if that import works correctly and there's no error, then you have everything installed and you don't need to do anything else. But if for some reason it fails, we need to type in another command. Now, what we're going to do is we can do this in two ways for this MySQL Python connector. We can download it from the download link that I have in the description, and you can pick which version of Python it is that you need. So in this case, I have like 3.7, 2.7, 3.5, all of that. So you can download the correct one and run through that installer and it should install it for you. Or what you can do is do a pip command, which will install this. Now I'm going to use the pip command and show you how this works. It's pretty much just pip install. And then in this case, we go MySQL like that hyphen connector. Now wait for this to run. And once this runs and installs, you're good to go. And we can actually start writing the SQL queries. So again, just to recap here, you're going to test to see if you can import MySQL. If you can do that properly in Python, wherever you're writing the Python code, you're good to go to this next step. Otherwise, you need to run pip install MySQL connector or download the file from the link in the description, run through that installer and it should install that for you. All right. So now that we've installed everything, what we're going to do is test to make sure that everything's working. Now I'm going to provide a few solutions if some stuff doesn't work. So don't freak out immediately if something's not going correctly. And what we're going to start by doing is importing MySQL connector. Now just do this in any new Python file. So I'm just doing this in subline text. Doesn't really matter. Just run this in any Python file you want and make sure that this command works. We've already tested this, but just, you know, run this, make sure you don't get an error. Next, what we're going to do is try to connect to our database. So what I'm going to do is say DB equals my SQL dot connector dot connect. Now, before I even bother typing the rest of the stuff, what I want you to do is run this. So I'm running this by just hitting control B in subline text and make sure that you don't have any errors with this. Cause if you have an error, we need to fix that. So if you run this and you get something saying like, there's no attribute connect, don't freak out. What you need to do is go to the website and install 
that connector file um, that I talked about before. So I think I have it. Actually, I don't still have the window open. Otherwise, I would show you guys. But essentially, what I showed before when I said, you know, this is the Python connector download for whatever version of Python you have, you need to install that. And installing that should hopefully fix your problem. Now, that's because sometimes the pip command doesn't work properly when you do that pip install MySQL connector, whatever it is. So just run the actual file and hopefully that should work and be proper for you guys. Okay, so now that this command is working, what we need to do is actually connect to our database. Now, remember I was saying before, what you typically end up doing is you're going to connect to an actual server, so a different computer all alone. Now, since this is running on the same computer as the one that we're actually writing this code on, what we're going to type here for the host attribute is localhost. So I'm going to say dot connect host localhost. Next, I'm going to put the user. Now, again, this user can be whatever you want. I'm going to put it as root, but you could make it um, whatever user you created. So in that case, I made a user called Tim. I could connect with that. But let's just do root and then for pass wd which is just your password i'm going to type root as well now that was what i selected as my password you guys might have a different one that you're going to put this just in plain text whatever the password was now let's run this again and see if that's working okay so that's working we're good we can move to the next step so the next thing that we're going to do is create a cursor object using this database and execute one sql query to create a new database so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say my cursor and you I mean you can call this whatever you want equals db dot cursor like that now that we have this what we can do is kind of curse through the database and run SQL queries and get information that we want so the first query I'm gonna make is gonna create a new database now if you're not familiar with SQL queries don't worry we're gonna go into detail about exactly how they work but the way that this one works is we do my cursor dot execute and inside here we're gonna put a string which is gonna be the query that we want to execute so this is kind of the standard way to do this you say my cursor dot execute and then your query goes inside of a string so in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to say create database and this is in all capitals and I'm going to call this one test database like that now notice subline text is noticing that this is a query so it's highlighting it for me um, but your editor might not do that so don't worry anyways we have that so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and hit control B we see there's no issues everything worked and now we've officially created a new database now what I'm going to do is change my connection option here at the top when I connect to connect to this specific database that I just created. So now what I'm going to do is put database here is equal to and we're going to put the string test database because that's one we already made, right? So we'll do that here, test database, and then we can actually get rid of this execute command like that. We can run this and we can see that we don't get any errors. So I know I haven't showed you guys much. We've just got everything set up, but hopefully everything's working here. If you have questions or concerns, leave a comment in the next video. We'll get into actually working with the database, committing some stuff, adding some things, understanding how these queries work and all of that. But as always, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like and let me know what else you want to see from the series in the comments down below.